Did you guys just wake up? Welcome to Riot LA! Good morning. Uh, I'm so excited. Uh, this is one of my absolute favorite podcasts. Uh, please put your hands together for The Dollop! You gave it a whirl, didn't you, Meryl? Hi, everybody. Hi. I'm, hey. I'm the dollop. That's definitely tough to hear. Uh, strange. What is going on? What? Oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, you're really saving that little chestnut, huh? How sad is it that I came down here before the show and put that back there? Oh, that was Oh, you. I thought you had it on. It was on like you. a setup, and then. No, oh, you're basically carrot top. <laughs> you're girl top. I am girl top. You guys know what I'm talking about. Don't creep. I hear out. beeping. Yeah, someone's watches. Someone has somewhere Someone to watch? be. They Someone have to go back? to the dollop right now, and their alarm is. Is going someone out. backing up? Who's backing up? Is it what, pop? It's the popcorn machine. You know, it's a really, it's a great show when you can hear the popcorn machine. Well, we, we can tell you're locked in. What's that beeping? A mile and a half away, there's a beeping. What's that? What is that? On a mountaintop, a goat is shrilling. What do we, shut it down. Okay. That guy's honking his goddamn horn. Stop shutting doors. Okay, um. I wish I could remember the fucking guy's name. So we have a, we have a, oh, uh, in the audience is a, 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 how many people have never heard the podcast before? Okay. See, we're doing That's a hand clap and a hand raise, so we weren't clear, but there, yep. some hands yep. went up and others uh, clapped. So. No, could you, could you just blink? <laughs> um, so in the audience is a direct des descendant of Samuel Whitmore. Oh, shit. How about that shit? That's real shit. Do you remember who that is? Yeah. Yeah. He has no idea who that is. Yeah, no, I know him. The badass old guy from yeah, the, the old Revolutionary guy. War. Yeah, the old guy, from the Revolutionary War. He's a badass. And sir, I'll just say, big fan. So, wherever you are. Um, we want to thank our subscribers at Patreon. You guys are awesome. Uh, That's I not think, directed to the hand raisers. I think if uh, if you guys were not donating, we wouldn't be doing this anymore. That's, <laughs> what? It's an insane thing to say. Because it's it sounded normal when you said it, but because we just we just do this for money. No, okay, don't. We don't have fun. This don't, isn't. Don't fun. open up anymore. Put the hat back this on. Go back fun. to that bit. That was a better this isn't bit. Enjoyable. That was, it, nope. It's a tedious, David. arduous fucking podcast. All right, buddy. That takes Dave. my soul Dave every o. week. All right, pal. And my wife doesn't love me anymore because she doesn't see me. My son calls me Phil. Um, yeah, it must be tough to have your name changed like that. Wow. Well, hey, this kitty has claws. I think we need to bar Meryl from shows. His name's Marble. Marble. Just changed. <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, originally we had Patton Oswalt lined up, but he is a fucking asshole. <laughs> and so we got somebody better. Uh, much better. Not as popular. Um, What's happening? But better. Better in a way that he's funnier. Dave. And sm smarter, but just not to the masses. Uh, this is not. He was on a show that was canceled on TBS, I think. Rory, I don't. And he is, I believe, available for work. Ladies and gentlemen, Rory Scovel. <laughs> I, oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, he was, uh, we made him wait outside. <laughs> Way to kick it off right for me. <laughs> Bring me up with some pizzazz. <laughs> Folks, here's who we wanted. Here's who we ended up with. 
I'm happy. Oh, but there were others. There were... <laughs> we tried to get Patton Oswalt and ten other people. <laughs> and then Rory was actually just standing outside a few minutes ago and... You were selling stuff from your tote bag. We, I was trying to sell some of the free stuff we yeah. got. And Dave was like, do you want to be on our podcast? And I said, you got it. So I'm here to lend <laughs> my services. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Are you, hot, are you hot yet? I'm not hot, but I will take this off if I become hot. Yeah, you will. Oh, I like how you work. Hey, yeah. Rory. Hey, Rory. Yeah. Hey. November 18th, 1862. Okay. Uh, let us go there. James E. Sullivan was born in New York City, the son of Irish immigrants. Perfect. True. Thank you for doing all the research. I'm unaware that it's too. not a game show. <laughs> true. I, I think true. No, don't answer that. Okay. That's Sorry. Question. No, Sorry. Nope. Please hit your buzzer. Yep. <laughs> hit your buzzer if you think that's a fact. <laughs> By the way, I have a cold, so I'll be coughing like I'm dying throughout this podcast. Awesome. His parents were working class, and he got a public ed- education. At 16, he started working at Frank Leslie's Publications. You guys remember that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Frank Leslie. And two years later, he started his own paper, The Athletics News. Okay. He continued to work in sports publishing and expanded into selling sporting goods. So far, pretty boring. Yeah. I mean, that's what we're all thinking. But those were glory days. That's a glory time when you can just call your newspaper exactly. Athletic News. Like, (laughs) no creativity. (laughs) We're the Athletic News. (laughs) Any questions? (laughs) He was an athlete himself, starting as a runner at 15, as a member of the Pastime Athletic Club. That's a great name, too. And in 1888, he helped establish the Amateur Athletic Union, which was created to establish common standards for amateur sports. Huh? Yeah. It makes, so amateur sports were not really regulated before then, so... Right, you could do... You could do there anything. Was, there were, like, no... Oh, no touchdown. Piss on him. <laughs> what? Uh, right. I feel like that might not have been no? a thick... Oh, you are hot. Oh, boy. You know, after my <laughs> oh, after my athletic news joke didn't hit, I thought... Do you know how to take off fun. a jacket? <laughs> yeah, I got it. <laughs> Usually uh, people will... Well, the flopping one arm thing was... <laughs> yeah. Took okay. it off like you were I driving. <laughs> That's so terrifying. There's always that moment when oh, you're God. taking your jacket off well, while driving. You're done? like, here we go, here we go. <laughs> like, you're so Shit, scared that one faster. sleeve. Says, oh, oh, I'm no. in too deep. I'm in deep now. <laughs> yeah, put it back on. Take it off. <laughs> the only way out is through. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, so Sullivan... <laughs> Using the Amateur Athletic Union uh, to create common standards for amateur sports, wrestled control from the other amateur athletic unions in the country, and he was exactly the kind of asshole that was needed to fight for control. Quote, he was blunt, avoided compromise, and preferred honest directness no matter who got hurt. Okay, so, right. So, he didn't mind what happened, he would just get his way. Is yeah. what you're saying? He's a fucking asshole. Well, all right. Maybe he's a visionary. Uh, he, uh, his big break came in 1892 when he was asked to run the American Sports Publishing Company. He used his power in that position to push the AAU and, its, and his agenda. And under his control, the AAU took over, and soon most U.S. national championships took place under its leadership. He wanted to show, above all, the supremacy of um, the American athlete. Yep. Hmm. That's a little bit of a red flag. You think? <laughs> yeah. Is this the metaphor for Hitler? Yeah. <laughs> what is <laughs> the athlete will be the reigning race. <laughs> Only athletes will control the world. That was probably his voice. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> so he just wanted to make sure a- the amateur athletes in the States were the best. Well, he wanted to show that the American athlete was better than everybody else. And You're very yeah. emphatic. So When you okay. say better than everyone else, do you mean better than... Athletes from other countries or just people in general? Like just the everybody. amateur athlete is the best you can do. Just everybody. Just Don't everybody. tell them about professional athletes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't let you anyone know. You guys are doing great. No, we didn't sell any tickets tonight. You don't need to. You're at the height of your career. <laughs> yeah. The pinnacle. You're not doing it for money. <laughs> Back in the weight room, you amateurs. <laughs> <laughs> now, 
In 1904, the city of St. Louis was planning to host an event called the Louisiana Purchase Centennial Exhibition. <laughs> Catchy. All oh, right, the S L E P, whatever yeah, you said. Yeah, yeah. The L P C E. The S L C E T 12. Yep. What? Why wouldn't you celebrate 100 years of buying Louisiana? <laughs> Got to do something with it. Uh, so it was actually uh, combined and turned into a World's Fair. The Louisiana Purchase occurred in 1803, but 1904 is 101 years later, if yep. you're doing the math. Well, but the planning. Yeah. You really want to make sure you do it right, so you start planning on the anniversary for a big shindig right. a year from then. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it was delayed to allow for larger participation of more states and foreign countries. There would be exhibitions from 16, 62 foreign countries Uh-oh. and 43 states. Big, big hoo-ha. Six, did you say 62? 62 foreign countries wow, okay. and 43 states. Really so is a world's while fair. all this is going on, the International Olympic Committee was looking at different U.S. cities to hold the Olympics in in 1904. And after <laughs> contemplating New York and Philadelphia, they awarded the Olympic Games to Chicago. This would be the third Olympic Games. But the city of St. Louis was not pleased. The Olympics were going to take place at the same time as the Louisiana Purchase Centennial plus one-year exhibition. I want to add horror ambiance to this story. <laughs> really? The exact same weekend? <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely creepier. <laughs> and now I'm worried. Yeah, I didn't expect Maybe this. Maybe I'm misinterpreting the story. <laughs> no, 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 I think you know, we all were. No, you might be getting it right. <laughs> so Louisiana did what any respectful city would to do. They decided to hold their own sports competition, and they reached out to Sullivan... And, of course, Sullivan agreed to stage the AAU Track and Field Championships at the World's Fair. The Amateur Athletic Union was huge, so this was a big deal and a big problem for the Chicago Olympics. What they were trying to do was to force the IOC to move the Games to St. Louis. Really? Having a larger competing athletic event happening at the same time as the Olympic Games could spell ruin. So, Olympics founder Pierre de Coubertin mm. gave Beautiful. in... And, yeah, yeah, he's French. Know. He's French. Hello. <laughs> I looked it up. I fucking went and I pressed a button and a French guy went, Pierre de Coubertin. And I was like, I got, I got this. Mm, Pierre, the scent was strong. <laughs> <laughs> Someone get Pierre on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Pierre, we found another body. Was it an amateur or a professional athlete? We're not talking about professionals anymore, (laughs) Pierre. (laughs) (laughs) So, Pierre gave in, and the games are switched to St. Louis, but Pierre was pissed. No, of course he was, was, right? He said he thought, quote, the Olympiad would match the mediocrity of the town of St. Louis. That's backhanded. Have fun. I love that. Might be front-handed. I love a comment like that. Really puts St. Louis in their place. (laughs) Now, you've always hated St. Louis. Always hated them, no matter what. Uh, It's just... Nope, that's all I've got. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. Chapter two. (laughs) Once the decision was made, Pierre pretty much bowed out of the Olympics. All communication between St. Louis and Coubertin stopped. He actually loathed, loathed Sullivan, so Sullivan and St. Louis were on their own to do what they wanted. So they were are making their own Olympics? Well, there was no Olympic charter for them to follow, no rules, they... no, <laughs> no, no nothing. Wait, a ruleless Olympics? Yep. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a movie. <laughs> that's the year poker got in. <laughs> <laughs> and poker slid right under the door. <laughs> no, we've always been in the Olympics. Yeah, 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 yeah. Call Pierre. <laughs> He's not answering. Oh, He's not answering. Well, well, you got to take our word for it, I guess. Uh, yep. <laughs> the World's Fair was much longer than the Olympic Games. Instead of lasting two weeks, the Olympic Games were incorporated into the fair, which meant they would take place over seven months. What? <laughs> what? No. <laughs> what? No. A what? Seven month Olympic. Seven month festival. What happened? <laughs> Wait, is, that, is that weird? <laughs> is that strange? <laughs> what? What? People are coming I mean, from they... 62 countries? 
What is their hotel bill? Well, say goodbye to your wife and kid. They'll be a year yeah. older when you see them again. So they uh, did, not only did they have no affiliation with the Olympic Committee anymore, but they had no idea what the Olympics were. <laughs> Zero idea of the time frame. Yeah. What do you think? Seven months for this guy? Seven, eight? How long does it take to do this? Seven shit? if we're rushing. All right, let's rush and do seven. <laughs> seven so going from eight, half the April earth. to November. <laughs> and the rest of the world That's wasn't a... as into the Olympics in a <laughs> second-tier U.S. city that would be difficult to travel to and would take place for seven months. So many nations decided not to go to the 1904 Olympic Games. Yeah. The fair slash Olympics started on April 30th, 1904. The opening ceremony for the Olympics was, was held... four and a half months. <laughs> <laughs> Milk it. We're still building courses. <laughs> the opening ceremony was held in May. After many speeches from a lot of politicians, track and field... Con- Con- contests immediately commenced. Spectators watched the event in the packed stadium, but what they were actually watching were the Missouri High School Track and Field Championships. I, I don't Ooh. even understand. What? <laughs> what? I'm not going to lie, A lot Dave. of people turned out for this one, huh? Your discovery of this story is a screenplay ready to be written. <laughs> <laughs> Hope no one here writes screenplays. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> the fair itself was nothing like anyone had ever seen. It was the largest... Wait, wait sorry. Yes. Why, why were they watching high school people... C- what happened? They just... How were they going to fill seven months with fucking athletes? They're just like, yeah, you okay. guys want to do it? All right, so they <laughs> So the opening ceremony was... So was the it a scam or they're just school? insane? Think about it's a, a little bit of both. Packed, right. A packed stadium. A packed stadium with all these... I'm pretty nervous to compete <laughs> yeah. in the Olympics. I just thought this was the 1500. Honey, what's it say on the ticket? Is this the Make-A-Wish no, Day? It just what's, says, who's no, it, that down there? It just I can do that. Regular. No, it's regular. Kid looks like he's 13. <laughs> he is 13. <laughs> oh. He, yeah. He's the best athlete in the world. <laughs> he's 13. <laughs> and a little chubby. Uh. Uh, it was the largest, ex- largest exposition that had ever been held, covering 1,272 <laughs> acres. <laughs> The fair had educational exhibits, including scientific agriculture, art, great inventions and discoveries, health, quote, electricity up to 1904. <laughs> Thank wow. God they didn't get into that 1906 electricity in 1904. <laughs> Jesus Christ, what would have happened? <laughs> and uh, we'll have to plug ourselves in. So, um, anyways. I'm, I'm picturing a coach in the locker room going, guys, I'm not going to lie to you. These people think this is the Olympics. <laughs> so seriously, try to behave, please, when you're out there. Come on, act like you're a goddamn <laughs> Olympian! Get your head out of your ass! You're competing for the gold! Or a medal that everyone gets! <laughs> Um, there was also machinery, manufacturing, mining, <laughs> quote, new, ho- new household methods. It must Olympics. have been a, It's a great, well, it's also a fair. It's a fair slash Olympics. It's, uh... Uh, and then there was uh, women's progress since the World's Fair at Chicago, which was probably a great, great exhibition. <laughs> <laughs> They're wearing dresses still. Because there was dress. zero progress for women. I'm wondering Back what then. was the amount of progress they were allowed to, like, Well, it was begin. probably and, and an empty room where they just assumed nobody would go. <laughs> <laughs> like, someone tried to go in, they're like, Sir, are you put- why are you pushing that door, buddy? <laughs> Women's progress? No. The, you know, there's something about electricity in 1906, <laughs> two doors down. <laughs> go hit that up. To go down there. Go down no there. One's... <laughs> we can watch some of the world's best teenagers compete. I would like it if they went in, there was just a woman churning butter. <laughs> help. It's the same! Help it's me! It's the same! Help us! Shut the door! Get the goddamn gun! Shut the door! Anyway, don't go in there and tell everyone else to not go in there. Photographers came with their bulky cameras. One of those photographers was Jessie Tarbox Beals from Buffalo. She was the nation's first female news photographer. When she left... Buffalo newspapers reported that, quote, Buffalo lost one of its best professional women today. 
But when she applied for an official pa- press pass at the fair, she was denied. Fair officials didn't think she could do what men did, hauling a camera all over the grounds. Jesse contacted the local papers, hoping to get hired as a staff photographer. Nope, they all turned her down. So she went back to the fair officials with more ammo in the form of all of her past work and totally wore them down. I hope on her way she passed the women's progress <laughs> exhibit, stopped, and was just like, mother <laughs> sons of bitches. Yeah. You could live in here, I guess. <laughs> no, that's not what I want. Also, I love that Buffalo was like, well, she's not coming back. <laughs> like, <laughs> she's going to report something. They're like, well, Boy, she's not coming back. We've been back here before. Mm. Good Lord. Lost another one. They don't come back. <laughs> No, St. Louis will be amazing that's, compared to that's, Buffalo. That's the, that's the self-esteem of Buffalo. Once she gets to St. Louis well, and she sees, sees that there's fun the, in the world. The bright lights of St. Louis, look out. <laughs> uh, she ain't coming back. Kiss her goodbye now while you got a chance. No. She gets the hustle and bustle of that St. <laughs> yeah. Louis life under uh, her feet. Just the energy and the life She'll of St. Louis. She, she, she won't sleep. St. Louis is the town that barely naps. That's Have fun being it. awake for seven months. Yeah. She's Reporting. going to the seven-month Olympics. <laughs> Carrying that bulky camera. <laughs> she, she took all her life's work. The next day after she was hired, a headline in the local St. Louis newspaper read, quote, woman gets permit to take pictures at the fair. Oh, my God. What? Honey, get in here. Have you seen today's paper? Get the kids and my gun. We're moving to Buffalo. I hear they're kicking their female photographers out of town. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus Christ, the goddamn apocalypse! (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, she went on to take pretty much the best photos of the fair. (laughs) Surprise. Uh, She photographed exhibits like the world's largest organ, the world's largest cedar bucket. Wait, when not you say the world's organ, largest organ. No, actual organ, not okay, the one right, you think. Not, it wasn't like a liver. Look or at a the dick. liver! <laughs> Look a, at that was in somebody! You know what I like? When you say that she like took the best pictures, you know that if they were making a movie about her, they would include the character who existed in real life, of the man who would look at me like, well, let's see what's special about these photographs. They're just regular pictures. Like, compared to the others, they're, like, blurry and shitty. Like, oh, because she's in focus? What does that even mean to you, Jason? <laughs> who cares? <laughs> Squint your eyes, you lazy piece of I'm shit. I'm not trying to look at the athlete. That's a high school kid. I want to see the horizon. I know they're in focus, but <laughs> she's a woman. <laughs> uh, how could I possibly love this photograph more than this other photograph? I mean, good Lord. <laughs> they're Defines identical. Defines me as a person. <laughs> I tricked you. Those were both her photographs. God damn it, ah, Jason! Fine! You're the worst assistant. Write an article about it. Uh, it really she... fizzled out quick. All right. <laughs> she also Christ. photographed the world's lar- largest cedar bucket. <laughs> uh, never mind. That? Now I'm off her team now. <laughs> By the way, that's in Tennessee today, if you want to. How big um, is it? It's six feet. That's a big ass bucket. I it's was a gonna, big fucking I was, bucket. Super that's useful. That's a gold medal bucket. Yep. The bucket won a medal. What are we gonna do with it? What? Put the organ in it. <laughs> Throw that liver in there. Drown the woman. No, 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 no more spitballing. There'll be no more spitballing. <laughs> <laughs> Took a dark turn early. No more brainstorming. Uh, there are also crazy new food items like cotton candy, peanut butter, Dr Pepper, puffed wheat cereal, and waffle cones. Okay, so not a bad festival. Yeah. We still use those things today. Yes. There was beautiful Jim Key, a famous performing horse. Oh, you don't need to tell us who that horse is. Mm. Jim Key? Jim Key. Oh, what a pony. His owners? Can I ask a question? Yes, go. Is it J-I-M space K-E-Y? Or is is it J-I-M like K-I? It's or it's actually Jim Key. Jim Key. Like the name of a person. Yes. Yeah. yeah it's All a, right. It's a, <laughs> well, it's hold a on. the man name. Beautiful Jim Key. <laughs> oh. So his first name is Beautiful. Middle name Jim, last name Key. All right. Not a lot of people have that name. <laughs> no. Nope. There's Not a, a boxer out there named Beautiful Jim Key at this True. time. <laughs> uh, his owner said he could read and write. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> let's let's just pump um, the brakes for a second right there. That seems like a good spot to jump in. Mm. So there. So this is not only a beautiful yes. horse with a man name. Yes. But it's also literate. Very literate. Yes. 
and read that's and the write. owner. The owner claims <laughs> I that. Actually that really wrote... ups the resale value. <laughs> oh, it can also read and write and babysit children. Yes. Uh, and it can fly. And it just wrote an article about a woman photographer. <laughs> and what else can it do? Well, uh, it's a field goal kicker. It can make change. It can also make change. Just, the, just see the newspaper, giant headline. Horse can read and write. Honey, come in here. There's a female photographer at this <laughs> festival. <laughs> Jesus Christ, the world is insane. Oh, my God, look. A What's horse, real anymore? There's a horse that can read and write. Shut up, Rebecca. I'm sorry. Shouldn't have. <laughs> You're right. I'll be in the churning wing. Of course the horse can read and write. It's the woman and the snapping of the photograph. I can't believe a woman can <laughs> manipulate a camera button. <laughs> Of course a horse can read and write and make change. He's a horse. It's beautiful Jim Key. He owes me $50. If this photographer woman ever rides this illiterate horse, time travel will happen. Fly through a stargate into the sky. <laughs> uh, beautiful Jim Key could also do arithmetic for numbers below 30. <laughs> How? How is that even possible? Uh, as, how, how is it not possible? <laughs> no, as right. well as cite Bible passages, quote, where so, a horse is mentioned. So. <laughs> uh, of course. He's, he's like, I'm only doing the ones about horses. Yeah. They just really interest me. <laughs> anyway, here's your change. <laughs> But I mean, the horse. Someone forced the horse passages on him. He didn't. He didn't decide that. <laughs> it wasn't like the horse read the whole Bible and was like, mm, "I only want to remember the ones with horses in it." <laughs> <laughs> what kind of fair? maybe he was trying to make a point? <laughs> was this a fair or a circus? What was this? <laughs> well, what was the difference back then? I uh, now that you're I, learning. <laughs> now that I think about it, I don't know what the difference was. <laughs> All right. So that's just your normal fair crap, right? Yeah. And then, uh, because it was 1904, uh, things got weird. Things then got weird. One of the main attractions was the Philippine Village. Oh, boy. There. Oh, boy. (laughs) A lot of assumptions where this is going. It's uh, It's not going somewhere good. uh, We're going to miss that horse in a minute. Just like like the State Fair in Sacramento. And immediately the theater exploded with white guilt. (laughs) Nah, here's where we fucked up. Oh, fuck. Go on, read it. There, visitors could gaze upon actual Filipinos living in their native habitat. Ah, not in so what, bad. In what? But wait. Yep. That's now, to me. now, cool. were they? Did they want to live in their habitat, or were they like polar bears in the zoo? Oh. Where they're like, please free us, and they're like, look, they're adorable. <laughs> I love your accent. I think. I think we all know the answer to that question. <laughs> Pretty certain none of them were like, mm, I'll do it. <laughs> I'd lo- I'd oh, stand have- here on display like yeah. an animal? Yeah, of course, I'd love <laughs> <Absolutely>. that. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> they were from the Agarot tribe who were dog eaters. Huh. Oh. Well, so people would no, walk no. around watching Filipinos eating dogs. Uh. Everybody good? <laughs> were there any athletes competing? <laughs> we'll get there. There were other villages, the Pygmies from Central Africa, the Syrians, the Turks, tons of people from all over the world, as well as American Indians like the Apache. Great Native American warrior Geronimo was on display, oh. living his dream. Oh. All of these people <laughs> were called savages. Good. Good, good, good. And these savages would do... Uh, <laughs> would no, 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 no. All they good. would, all the savages would do at the exhibitions was just live their lives like they would in their homeland each day while people stared at them. It's just a good fair. It's just fun. It's just a fun fair. The goal of the fair was to show how amazingly advanced the people of America were. Oh, and, <laughs> that is fun. And up. white people in general compared to the rest of the non white world. This was all marketed by the fairs, and this is the actual name Department of Exploitation. <laughs> so they knew. So they weren't, like, hiding it. They were like, look, we get it. It's the fucked Department up. Department of Who gives Exploitation. A shit? <laughs> Hi, Jim Key, Department of Exploitation. My God, you're a talking horse. <laughs> uh, let me do the talking, sir. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you? you? If it's under 30? Otherwise, this conversation is going to have to stop. <laughs> My head won't. I can't grasp um, You see, it. I am a horse. Can I... Uh, uh, 
Can For I, you see, I, Noah rode a horse. And can what? I just have my change? Uh, right, sorry, the change. Absolutely, <laughs> the change. Right. He's doing funnel Sorry, cakes. there you go. So it was the Department of Exploitation's job to promote all these wonderful exhibitions. Promote. That's the term the Department of Exploitation used. James Sullivan was made head of the fair's Department of Physical Culture. His department was to show how great uh, the American style of athleticism was. And that's what he believed. Sullivan thought white Anglo-Americans were superior in brains and brawn, and he was going to use the fair and Olympics to prove it. Basically, this was the racial superiority world's fair slash Olympics slash anniversary of buying Louisiana. (laughs) Oh, right. Louisiana's purchase. Right. Don't forget about that. I forgot that that was thrown in. First, he went to the head of the fair's Department of Anthropology. This is a fucking weird thing. a lot fair. of departments. It's almost like a university with yeah. all the departments. <laughs> and he suggested they combine their efforts, and he, wa- he, he wanted to call it the Special Olympics. <laughs> the idea was to have the savages try to do s- the same athletic feats as very trained, very skilled white athletes. What? Basically, he it don't was, know discus. Basically, it was like... It Look was at like, his little brain. <laughs> America's the best! <laughs> it was like walking into an auto shop and pulling out a mechanic and making him swim like Michael Phelps. The head of the Department of Anthropology agreed to combine their efforts because it would give him data and help make a name for him in the new field of anthropology. So it's a win for everybody. Well, sounds like win, it. It's a win for everybody. Well... Everyone's getting their time in the sun. (laughs) Unfortunately, it wasn't as easy as it sounded. The so-called savages in their exhibits were actually paid showmen. They had agents and show producers who Uh, represented them. Not right now. I'm on break. I'm on an equity five. Don't even. I'm not in character right now. Don't look at me with the headdress off. Turn your kid away. I'm having a smoke break, asshole. (sighs) Also, most of them didn't want to have anything to do with Sullivan's fucked up competition idea. Many of them thought the idea of the Olympics was ridiculous and others just wanted to be paid like the Ainu of Japan who climbed trees in their ex- exhibition. Sullivan wanted them to climb trees in the Olympics in the Olympic tree climbing competition. What the fuck? What? No. Alright, look. Anything can be a sport. <laughs> We're going to go around the room, raise your hand and tell us what you think should be a sport. Climbing trees. Of course, climbing <laughs> yes. trees. That was already on the board. Yes. If it's on the board, don't repeat it. Digging. We need a hundred new sports, guys. Digging. We have a lot of Hide and go to seek. Go. Yes. Uh, tag would be a good yes, one. Yes, of course. Opening can. Yes, That's great. of course. That's great. Get that high on the board. That's going to be in the opening ceremonies. Can opening. But, which is a month and a half. Yeah. Why were the Anu of Japan climb trees for free in a competition when they got paid to do it in their exhibition. So he was running into some problems, and some events were quickly a no-go, like the water polo event. Everyone thought it sounded stupid. Hmm. I don't disagree there. But the planning went on. The planning went on, and while it did, the fair went about its business. On June 5th, there was a bullfight scheduled to take place in an arena. The arena had been... I'm sure you bring it up because it was great. It's going to be good. The arena had been built specifically for the bullfight by promoter Richard Norris. He called it the Norris Amusement Company Arena. It seated 16,000. Norris signed 36 bullfighters to contracts. But there was a bigger problem. Bullfighting was illegal in the United States and Missouri. Uh. Under pressure from religious and animal rights groups, the governor ordered anyone involved in bullfighting arrested. But Norris had already sold 8,000 tickets for a dollar each. Well, what the fuck is he going to do? the event went on as planned. Yep. Smart. First, there was a horse show. Next came a lacrosse... Now, was Jim Key in the horse show? I don't know. <laughs> uh, he's he above that, Garrett. <laughs> he wasn't... Jim booked. Key's no. not... He's he was doing, doing a horse he, show. Jim Key's doing one-nighters. No. Uh, <laughs> he was working in the box office. <laughs> It's good 50. to know that. Uh, Get out of here. It's good to know that at that time our country was uh, very protective of bulls, but very adamant that the savages have their own <laughs> well, display. Yeah. No, the we're... Department of Exploitation <laughs> didn't want a bull hurt. <laughs> Just humans. After the lacrosse demonstration, the crowd started getting lacrosse irritated. Demonstration. 
That's right, guys. <laughs> Woo! Lacrosse is fun. Yeah. Lacrosse is neat. They yeah. had like a whole song. Look at dance. it. I'm going to catch it. Look at that net. Yeah. Throw to the goal. They it's, don't count. We're not keeping score. What it, an exhibit. Where, where are the bulls? Yeah. All right, guys. We know you all yeah. want the bulls. There's just 20 more minutes of lacrosse. <laughs> We're lacrosse. We're better than water polo that you all voted out of this festival. (laughs) So the crowd got irritated and started booing. They had come to see a man. They had come to see a man kill something, and they wanted it now. So the announcer announced a bullfighter, Don Emmanuel Cervera. Then a deputy stepped out and told the announcer there would be no bullfighting. The cops took Norris and other organizers into the arena office to discuss the situation. The office. The arena office. <laughs> no, come with us. we got to talk. Super tiny closet right. size. Have the lacrosse guys milk a little more time. We'll be <laughs> back in a minute. Stretch. Stretch, guys. The spectators all demanded refunds. Instead of getting refund, refunds, they were told to leave. Sounds that good. didn't go over well. They started throwing rocks through the windows of an arena office. Police tried to stop the growing riot, but there were too many rock throwers and not enough policemen. Someone tried to storm the office, but the cops held them back at gunpoint. The mob then went into the arena and released three bulls. (laughs) (laughs) Uh. Sports! (laughs) (laughs) I would honestly watch the Olympics if it was like this. I would go to this. I would go. I would go, for sure. Uh, For sure. Well, it gets weird. A lacrosse... A lacrosse demonstration? I'm in. Of course I'm there. But the bulls were so emaciated, they didn't really do anything. They just stood there. Now the crowd thought the whole thing was a scam. So they set the hay... They're just horses! So they set the hay in the bullpen on fire. The entire grandstand was built out of pine and tar paper. (laughs) Dave, are those flammable items? Hey, wait. Soak it in gas first. Yeah. So it went up pretty fast. The arena burned completely to the ground. Oh, my God. Two days later, bullfighter Severa and another bullfighter named Carlton Bass got into a fight over the lack of pay, and Bass killed Severa. <laughs> so at least something died. Right? Yeah, it's a bullfight. So... And now we're on to June. <laughs> <laughs> Just Month four more two. months. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, July. <laughs> what could go the first, worse? worse. <laughs> the first of two gymnastic events took place. Young George Iser took part. He was a product of uh, German-based gymnastic clubs. Uh, were very popular in Germany and moved to the States in the late 1800s. Now, George had one normal leg, and the other was amputated below the knee. Help? What happened? She's taking her jacket there. off, oh. and I just yeah, immediately thought no, she did it like a normal thing. person. She yeah. used her hands, yeah. and I could. Yeah. No one helped me. I wanted to be a, an example. <laughs> wanted to help help people. So George had one normal leg, and the other was amputated below the knee, and there he had a wooden prosthetic. And, and he was been, a gymnast. It, yep. Oh, it's weird. It's You're more shocked by that than the horse with the horse that can fly. <laughs> 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 now I've heard everything. <laughs> so he was part of a gymnastics club in St. Louis, and so he got involved in the games. The first event, called the International Turner's Championship in July, he didn't do so well. He came in 10th in the all-around and 71st in a second all-around. Surprisingly, he finished last in the triathlon. Apparently it's hard hmm. to sprint and do a long jump with one leg. That's awkward. I would... Love, I mean, I know they have the Olympics with people with prosthetics, but it's like a though. fucking clunky wooden leg. Yeah, like that's an Olympics. Yeah. Just people running around like yeah. trying to do stuff and they can't. <sighs> it's tremendous. I wonder. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a weird. It's a weird dream. The I want special, you to get that. The Special Olympics, or as they be called, Anthropology Days. What? were held on August 12th and 13th. Sullivan, Sullivan invited scientists from all over the world to witness the event. <laughs> A local paper described it. The unique spectacle of men deliberately throwing stones at one another. Wait, so were those guys rioting just athletes? 
so much more Training? interested in that than the gymnastics. <laughs> That's kind of where I'm at. All right. <laughs> I just bronzed in a rock fight. So yeah. things are pretty good over <laughs> yeah. here. Got a pretty um, bad gash there. Yeah, on your it's school. not good, no, but you should see the other guys. <laughs> if I could see, I can't. My vision is very blurry. The unique spectacle of men deliberately throwing stones at one another will be one of the features at the ath- athletic meet to be held at the stadium Thursday and Friday, in which <laughs> all of the savage tribe now at the World's Fair will compete. Uh. <sighs> scientists are floating the in. The scientists Do they even read the invitation? <laughs> We'll go anywhere. <laughs> We're scientists. Get those clipboards. It's an event where people throw rocks at each other. Hmm. All right. Yes. Oh, that's very scientific. Yes. What kind of rocks are they? I would love to go to that. Quartz? Or... <laughs> that's what interests me. Uh, <laughs> I'm a man of science. I... The first day was the shot put, the high jump, the long jump, the mile, and other events. One was throwing a baseball. <laughs> to, to where? To what? Like, to what? Just throwing it. It's Who could throw of, it the furthest? Yeah, but the if kind you're of from, Olympics if you're 10-year-olds put together yeah. in their backyard. <laughs> like, right, the a, what if you've throw. never thrown a baseball and they're like, go throw that? And you're like, uh, uh, uh. like, you don't know what to do. You have to be taught how to throw a baseball. But that's right? all? Just throw? Yeah. All right, guys. Welcome to throw. <laughs> <laughs> I think put stuff like that back in. I agree. Yeah, I agree, too. Absolutely. You turn on the Olympics and everyone's seen who can throw a baseball the farthest. <laughs> I'm great. like, yes, this yeah. is more my speed. That dude threw it really fucking far. Oh, God. He's got to win the gold in baseball throwing. <laughs> <laughs> a lock. Now, here's the catch. They did not take any time to teach the participants what to do. They were given instruction immediately before the event without an interpreter. So they weren't given instruction. Well, they were, but just in a different language than they knew. Okay, you guys understand? All right, go out there and throw baseballs. (laughs) And then rocks at each other. (laughs) Thanks for doing this, guys. (laughs) They were also not allowed to practice at all, not once. That's cheating. They had no idea what the high jump was, and so it basically was not an event. (laughs) Oh, they're limboing! They're just treating it like a limbo contest! (laughs) Fucking, who told them? The 100-yard dash was anything but. Since they all spoke different languages, it was total chaos just getting them lined up. (laughs) Then when the starting gun went off, most had no idea what in the fuck it was. (laughs) Run! Anyway! (laughs) And were were just terrified. (laughs) Some just froze. Others, not realizing it was a race, just slowly ambled down the track. (laughs) Come on, guys. That's That's what you needed the rabbit. You needed the little rabbit that goes around the track. Get that fucking thing! Go get him! The ones who did run didn't know what to do when they got to the finish line. Most of them would just stop at the tape instead of running through it. Well, yeah, they probably didn't want to rip it. They were yeah. probably like, that's nice. That makes that's... perfect sense. Yes. yes, it does make perfect yeah. sense. Yeah. <laughs> totally. So then essentially it was just a, uh, the competition was to see who could go through the ribbon. Yeah. Yep. Who was brave enough to go through a ribbon? <laughs> and the scientists are just like, hmm, interesting. And this I actually... <laughs> Can't wait to take this data I... back to my home country and <laughs> compute it in some way. In four months. <laughs> <laughs> what? No return flight? That's interesting. <laughs> the majority of participants would realize what the event was after it was over and then when asked to have another go, but they were denied because, quote, it violated the research design and invalidated the racial comparisons to white athletes. Agreed. Okay. <laughs> it is very true. <laughs> sure. Well, that makes perfect sense. Hey, I, Once they know how to no, do it, quit. you guys, I get it now. I know what it is. Can we Sorry. do it again? Shut up. <laughs> the event is over. <laughs> you lost. But the white guys are... Doing great. great. They're, They're great, aren't they? Look at them Those celebrating. Those are some of the best teenagers this country <laughs> has to offer. <laughs> Goddamn woman taking pictures. Is she still she's here? She's over there. Don't even look at her. Right. Her. It's so crisp oh, and she's clear. she's so serious. I didn't even know what rack focus was until I... Nor should you. I grabbed coffee She belongs with in that butter churning room. <laughs> They were all listed in the, all the participants were listed in the official games report based on what country they were from and with their names. Though a Congolese pygmy who had sharpened teeth was described in the report only as cannibal. 
Uh, but the event went great, according to the press. Great fun for savages, read the headline in the L.A. Times. I just would, I kinda, It would be great to live in a time where your headlines were this insane. I mean, I know our headlines are insane, but that is... Like, to pick up a paper and be like, oh, look, savages had fun at the Olympics the other day. <laughs> I just oh. love picturing, like, them going back to their home country and be like, where did you go? And they're like... You won't, you won't even believe what I'm about to tell you. Talk! <laughs> I was St. Louis. I was there for seven months. I was competing in competition. I didn't even know what was going I on. I just had to throw rocks against a bunch of other non-white people. I thought I, I was I thought I was walking down a road, and it was a race. <laughs> they shot at me and then got pissed when I didn't go through a ribbon. <laughs> Never go to America. Just that's 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 a, never, except ever go to America. I will America. say this. Buffalo is gorgeous this time of year. Go yeah. there. Oh. There Ugh. was a woman with a camera. Oh. What? <laughs> uh, day two was supposed to be better. Sullivan considered these events to be more savage friendly. Sure. There was the tree climbing contest, archery, fighting demonstrations, a Mohawk versus Seneca lacrosse match, and mud throwing. Oh my god. Mm. What how do you even Did I mention mud throwing? Yeah, how who hey, are there that? judges? What is I happening? I got the golden mud throwing. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Like, it's what? the that's the final thing on the list. Guys, we need one more fucking <laughs> I got to go home. My wife's all over. We're not leaving till we have a final have... event. Right, what do we got? What do we have that we can use? We got baseball throw, we got tree climb, we got count fast. We got <laughs> Hey, we got look. Hey, look, we got see the furthest. Hey, yes. hey, look at me. By the look way, at me, guys. <laughs> Poor mud. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I want to get back to the person who can see the farthest. I see a lot of <laughs> holes, and I know we're rushing to get out of here. But that one, to me, I'm worried about. I hope my miming to smoke a cigarette translates totally well does. into the podcast. Oh, it will. Blow into the mic harder. It will. People yeah. can tell. <laughs> People can tell. Why does he keep breathing? Guys, rewind and imagine me smoking a cigarette during that little act out we call stage work. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. They also had a javelin contest because they figured it was exactly like a spear, and every savage would know how to throw a spear, right? At one, won't they're not to just throw it far, right? Well, but now we know where that came from. It's not, but it's not like everybody throws a spear who's not white. No, I agree, but still, like, if you, if you, the whole thing is you're like, give the savages spears to compete, you might think they would use them as weapons. Perhaps. Wait, are you saying that they might turn on the audience? I don't know what I'm saying. Anymore. Uh... Thank you. Thank you. The massacre. <laughs> and now, the St. Louis massacre. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but the, the fortunate thing was anthropology days were put together so late that the Department of Exploitation didn't have time to properly promote it, and the result was that not many spectators were there to we're witness. We're not going to be able to exploit them enough. <laughs> Guys, we got deadlines. Holy shit. I got to know a before, a more longer than a week out. Please, you're gonna... for me to do my thing properly. Um, the great thing right. was... Sorry, sorry. sorry everybody. Gareth and I are yeah, sorry for sorry, that guys. one. <laughs> no meat in that one. Sorry. The, uh, the great thing was is that each winner... Of each contest, well, they didn't receive a medal like a regular Olympics. Of course, they right. did. They got something better. I bet they didn't. A T-shirt, <laughs> the memories, <laughs> an American flag. Oh, perfect. <laughs> yep. Perfect. Take cool. that back to your little mud hut. Yep. That ought to wipe the terrible taste out of their mouths after this. God Jay- bless you guys. James Sullivan saw the event as a success. He said it proved enlightened Americans were the best athletes in the world that the natives were completely inferior. He proved savages couldn't play proper games or participate in proper events like the white man. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. My God, you should have seen them try to play tennis. <laughs> <laughs> they had no idea. <laughs> they couldn't get the counting right. <laughs> they, were t- they would put the balls in the pot. They were running through the net. Uh, you should have been there. You should have seen it. Oh, we didn't explain goodness. anything to them. 
And these simple-minded idiots had no idea how to play and score tennis. It's like it's not <laughs> natural to them to understand tennis like it is the white man uh, who just instinctively knows what uh, to do on a court. They are foolish. Here's a racket. You'll know what to do and what those lines mean. <laughs> okay. Unless you're stupid. He double faulted again. Jesus, he doesn't even know how to serve. <laughs> He's double faulted. It's called backhand for a reason. A little tops. <laughs> no, no, the alleys are out, stupid. He doesn't even know you can volley. Don't keep playing. <laughs> Once you serve, maybe rush the net, play some defense. Oh, my, my God. God. He caught it. He caught the ball. He caught the ball. Oh. Oh. We are so much better. We're the best. Play defense. Oh, I hope we never introduce soccer. <laughs> <laughs> Sullivan said, quote, the whole meeting proves that the savage has been a very much overrated man from an athletic point of view. <laughs> who is, but who was like, who's going around saying that? The he department does, you know, who's the most athletic? The he believed he had debunked <laughs> the mythical existence of the noble savage, and in his final report, yes, he wrote a report. Good. Said, lecturers and authors will, in the future, please omit all reference to the natural athletic ability of savages. Point made. To all authors, he said that? Everybody. He's that was like, a this long... is it. We done it. Seven wow. months. And we're that not done. Guy, talk about holding a grudge. Oh, we're just getting started. <laughs> what what happened t- as a kid that he was like, you know what? One day I'll show them. I'll put on a seven-month-long fair, and I'll show you that white people are the best. <laughs> What did you say over there? Uh, nothing. I, I was just saying this coffee is phenomenal. Okay. Where is this from? thought I heard something about savages and white people. No. Why okay. would I All right. even say that? want to make sure. Say, do you, <laughs> do you know any sports that people haven't heard of? Well, me and my friends used to always throw mud at each other. Oh. <laughs> That's what's not reported. He had the weirdest, creepiest <laughs> laugh. <laughs> It was so distracting for the scientists. They're trying to like write stuff. Like, Nobody make a joke. Nobody make a joke. Is that how he laughs? Yeah, that's his real laugh. <laughs> Leave. Shh, just ignore it. Ignore it. Ignore it. <laughs> Try to ignore it. Push it out of your head. The founder of the Olympic Games, De Bortin, didn't go, but was furious when he heard about the anthropology days. Uh, he believed that it was an outrageous. What's happening? You guys all right? <laughs> R- <laughs> I just can't stop picturing him. I can't stop picturing him laughing. He's picturing himself laughing as the guy more and more. Oh, he's still, oh, he's still there. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a distraction every time. He introduces it in the God, what he just said is so racist. Do you hear him laugh? Oh, God. Just, God. just let him do whatever. Let him do anything. <laughs> just don't make him laugh. <laughs> oh, I'm shaking. Okay, so now it's time for the actual Olympic Games. What? The sort of uh, the official, sort of traditional period of Olympic Games, which are held from August 29th to September 3rd. Uh, Good Lord. Now, Wait, how could they, they fit were 12, it all in? Now, only 12 countries. So, so the whole... So they're, so they're calling everything the Olympic Games, but now they're doing the Olympic Olympic Games. Over four games. days? Yeah. Four days? Five days? Well, they don't have a lot of time. So they just spent... What? That is insane. What are you talking about? They just spent months and months in the Olympics making people climb trees and throw rocks. Right. And now there's gonna, they know what an actual Olympics is, and they're doing it. Olympics within the Olympics. No, but someone else is running the Olympics now. The like real Olympics is going to be double Olympics. But not this James this is, dude isn't involved. Yes, he is. Yeah, this is his Olympics. Fucking Christ, this story. <laughs> yeah, he's no, he's totally involved. Uh, <laughs> oh boy, he's yes, really involved. I am. He, oh, God. oh God, he's really having fun now. Which is a, he's really, when he gets started, he doesn't stop. Is the problem? <laughs> so now. For these Olympic Games, only 12 countries had shown up. Because okay, St. Louis is St. Louis. So of the 630 athletes, 523 were Americans. I like our chances. <laughs> That's right. Looks good to me. Over 50% of events were between Americans. Well, I like our chances. <laughs> including the tug-of-war contest. 
Shut up. Oh, yep. yeah. Yep. That, we should have put that on the list. We That's won a that. Good one. So it's more of a field day than it is. <laughs> It's like a company picnic. <laughs> yeah, it's more of a retreat. It's picnic. more of a retreat. Yeah. It's like a trust retreat. Out of the, uh, I'm competing at the ropes course later. Out of and the <laughs> balance beam, <laughs> potato sack race, the three legged race, the water balloon bobbing toss, bobbing for apples, <laughs> egg on a spoon, <laughs> <laughs> passing oranges between our necks. It's just three, the whole three legged race. Three legged race. Yeah. What did I say? I don't know. <laughs> Out of almost 100. Sports uh, of the sports, archery was the only event in which women were allowed to compete. There were six women, five from Ohio. Interesting. And yeah. one of those women won gold, if you can believe it. Really? Uh, they had one female exhibition sport, boxing. Interesting. So women couldn't participate in any sports unless they were shooting arrows or punching each other in the face. Shame we changed that. Makes sense. Uh... It was also not the best run Olympics. W- uh, this one was? Yep. It? Are we talking about the same Olympics, the seven month one? Yep. It wasn't the best run. It was not. Huh. What was the horse's name of Ramoth? <laughs> Hi, I'm Jim Key. That's Jim <laughs> You're beautiful. That's my best horse. That's your impersonation. Okay. His horse laugh is. It sounds so a lot like Jim Sullivan. <laughs> it's, Jim, it's almost like Jim Sullivan's laughing through as a horse. <laughs> At this Olympics, we're going to be having a tug of war. <laughs> Just do Hope everyone enjoys says. it. Do what the goddamn horse says. Johannes Rung of Germany uh, oh, finished I... fifth in the 800 meters. He was yep. a favorite to win, but he got really tired in the later part of the race. The reason he got really tired was because the day before, he had accidentally lined up and run in the wrong race. <laughs> So anybody could just the, race the 880 race, which he also didn't win because he was an 800 runner. <laughs> well, yeah, he, he was tired because the day before he Nobody. ran the 440 race. <laughs> <laughs> and this then is he the right one. He was this is the right one, right? Yeah. This is the one. Yes, just know. line up. Just run. line up. Run. <laughs> swimming, ven- swimming venues were held in open waters like rivers and lakes. The sure. men's 50-yard freestyle race was held in a man-made lake. Zoltan Halmaj of Hungary was maybe the premier swimmer of the time. He won the race, clearly defeating American J. Scott Leary by a foot. But a U.S. judge declared the American the winner. There we go. This led to a massive brawl between the Hungary and American swimming teams. Hmm. After the fight was broken up, they agreed to race again. That's and a... Halmaj won by a stroke. There was also an event called Fancy Diving. Let's see where this goes. Just where it sounds quasi normal. You just put on your Sunday's best, and just... <laughs> as you're, you're gonna... diving, you're just like, "I love caviar." <laughs> That's your best tuxedo. What are you doing? I'm diving this <laughs> afternoon. Hmm. All right. <laughs> this event was popular in Germany and Sweden at the time. One would try to do elaborate gymnastic feats in the air before hitting the water. An American won the bronze medal, but the Germans protested. They claim the German dives had been, quote, no. fancier. No. We had the fancier dives. If you, oh, God damn you judges. We were diving very fancier the whole time. <laughs> that was the fanciest I've ever dove. You can give him the bronze, but in my heart I have the gold, because I know how fancy we both dived earlier. Not one other diver was able to hit the water and maintain the top hat above their head. (laughs) Oh, and look at this. I still have my monocle in place. Thank you. Interesting. (laughs) Interesting how I wasn't the best. The goggle. The Americans said they had better entries into the water, which the Germans didn't seem to care about. The Germans made difficult, fancy dives but then flopped into the water on their stomachs. <laughs> I Look, if you're looking I for dive stand... as a finish, maybe we're just not the team, okay? Yeah. I stand corrected. Yeah. I maybe was not the fanciest of divers. Until, until we hit the water, though, fanciest by far. So well, fancy. While the Americans performed less difficult but more graceful dives, it was suggested they have a dive-off for third place, but German Alfred Bonschweiger refused to participate. I will not participate. <laughs> Horse manure. Sorry, Jim. It, what's after 30? 
<laughs> children, marriage and children. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank no, you so much. We gotta, For no, everyone listening no, at home, still, I got a standing still, ovation. No. <laughs> if you stand when people clap, I don't think that counts. <laughs> right, Technically, it you. is a standing ovation uh, to some barely, degree. Like, uh, to some degree, that is what happened. Semantics, but all right. <laughs> In the boxing event, a fighter named Carol Burton entered as a lightweight and won his first match. Burton was a very popular boxer in the area. But it was soon discovered he was not Burton at all. He was a man named James Bollinger who assumed Burton's identity. What? Why? This what? is a goddamn miniseries. <laughs> so many avenues of storytelling going on here. He did this because Burton was popular and he wanted to gain favor with the judges. So Bollinger was disqualified. His next opponent, Peter Sturholt, got a bye to the semis. Then Peter Sturholt was beaten by Jack Egan. Egan ended up with a silver, and Peter Sturholt got nothing for finishing fourth. But a year later, they found out Egan's name was not actually Jack Egan. <laughs> Oh, he boy. was Frank Floyd, another <laughs> imposter. So Egan was stripped of the medal, and a guy named Van Horn moved up to silver, and Peter Storholt won the bronze, even though he never won a fight. <laughs> but no one Christ. ever talks about the imposter era of boxing. <laughs> Olympic boxing. <laughs> That'd be great just to win a bronze. I didn't do anything. Yeah, you came in third, so. I got beat once. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, good, good for you. Well done. What's up? Yeah, I'm, no, I'm Mike Tyson. How are you? Yep. Yes. I will fight. Yes, I am. <laughs> yeah, I am. I am. You're, him. you're, yeah. you're white, white? Yep, yes. I am Mike Tyson. <laughs> Mike Tyson right here. I'm Evander Holyfield. We're going to give the people what they've wanted for a long time. I love that this original boxer was so popular that people watched it and they're like, I guess yeah. that's him. He looks yeah, terrible. I mean, he looks completely different from <laughs> man. He can hit. Was he always Italian? No. He did a lot of work in the off season. He's good. On now. his face. He's been he completely doing, changed his face. Doing Italianing. Sorry. Now, the Olympics big event was the marathon. This was the event that harkened back to the days of Greece that tied the ancient days to modern times. Well, I, I bet it's going to be a fitting tribute. It's going to be fucking great. <laughs> Some of the runners were legitimate marathoners who had previous success in other marathons. But <laughs> most of the part participants were middle distance runners or just weirdos. <laughs> the favorites were Americans Sam uh, Meller, uh, A.L. Newton, John Lorden, Michael Spring, and Thomas Hicks. These guys were all experienced at marathons. There was also Fred Lors, who trained at night because he was a bricklayer during the day. He had landed a place in the marathon by winning a five-mile race. Well, that shot, that'll translate, that makes I'm sense. sure. Yeah. That makes sense. Hmm, some bricklayer fans in here. Now, those were the legitimate runners. The contestants also included ten Greeks who had never run a marathon. Good. There was an ex-mailman Cuban named Felix Felix Carbajal, he had raised money to come to the U.S. by running the length of Cuba, but when he got to New Orleans, he gambled on dice and lost all his money. Uh, the, it's quite a siren, that town. Then he had to hitchhike to St. Louis. There were two men... Where the guy drove, driving him didn't believe anything he'd said. <laughs> yeah. Sure, buddy, yeah, sure. No, okay. I'm yeah, going to run in right. a marathon. I, yeah. I the know length you of are. Cuba. Yeah, know, of course you did. Yeah. Good yep. for you. To the Olympics we go, friend. <laughs> There were two men of the Tswana tribe of South Africa who were there as part of the Boer War exhibition. The war ended in 1902. The, sorry, the what war? Boer War. Okay. Yep. What happened? I know. Nothing. All, yep. I got it. Thank yep. you. Yep. Thank you. Uh, the war ended in 1902, and when it was over, the British burned all the crops, so everyone living there was fucked. They would take any job they could get, and the Boer War exhibition at the fair, which took place just two years after the actual war ended, was paying four pounds a week. The exhibition was created by a captain who had fought for the Rhodesians in the war. Men, women, and children signed up. At the fair, they recreated two famous battles of the war. The battle reenactments took two to three hours and included several actual generals and 600 veteran soldiers from both sides of the war. Oh, my God. That's a really long event. Yeah. Bring out lacrosse! <laughs> Somebody kill I him. miss lacrosse. We love lacrosse. We love lacrosse. <laughs> Net on a stick and a tiny ball. Look at it. I'm catching it, you guys. <laughs> Let's see who can throw it the farthest. 
Super short shorts, mega tight. Come on, t-shirt. guys, clap your hands with us. The cross. It's Never. really fun. The goalie stick is different. <laughs> Fuck. The two uh, the two men entered the marathon from uh, South Africa had served as messengers in the Boer War. They had also just participated in the One Mile event at Anthropology Days. In the actual war, they used to run great distances with messages, so they were considered to be capable of winning the marathon. They just needed a message to be in their hand. Right. That's all. Yep. Uh, the marathon was 24.85 miles long, or 40 kilometers. It was Tuesday, August 30th. The temperature was 32 Celsius, 90 Fahrenheit, and it was to be run on a dusty, unpaved road. Perfect. The dust was said to be inches thick. Oh, good. There were seven hills, and in one area, cracked stone was all over the road, which may have made it dangerous to run or walk on. The runners lined up at the starting line. The Cuban was wearing a white long sleeve shirt, long dark dress pants, a beret, and a <laughs> pair of street shoes. <laughs> was he coming from fancy diving? <laughs> <laughs> Someone grabbed a pair of scissors and cut his pants at the knees so he would be able to run easier. The what, two was he, what is anyone doing? Okay. <laughs> Great. The two South Africans were barefoot. The starting pistol was fired at 3.30 p.m. The so, dust... no, so nobody talks to anybody before an event. Doesn't seem like Literally it. Nothing, nothing happens. If you're there, great. If you're not, whatever. Just get on the line. Just get on the line. The dust was immediately a problem. Mostly because all of the traffic. Right. This is on a dirt road, and it was a busy dirt road. So while they were running, Thank they had you. to watch out for cross-town traffic, delivery trucks, trains. <laughs> I don't want things. if it wasn't for that truck. Still a functioning road. Yep. Duh. <laughs> yep. Well, you don't need to shut it down. No. Why would you shut it down? No, I mean, of course not. Uh, and just this as long was as years, everyone's aware. This was years after most of our laws were created. Yes. A fair this amount of time. <laughs> yeah. 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 Things had been established. <laughs> Life had started. Cars with runners, coaches, and their doctors would drive alongside the runners, kicking up tons of dust. <laughs> was hitchhiking legal? Could you just get yeah. Could you Marty McFly? Sure just that had to have happened. The runners stopped frequently to cough. Lors pulled ahead quickly, and then Thomas Hicks took the lead from him. It didn't take long for the first runner to go down. Oh, William Garcia collapsed on the side of the road. He was rushed to the hospital, where <laughs> it was discovered he was hemorrhaging from inhaling the dust. Uh, well, this thing should have been held in a hospital. <laughs> I, so far, support all of this. If any of us had to organize the Olympics, this is not far off from what we would do. <laughs> <laughs> the dust had coated his esophagus and ripped his stomach lining. Casualty of war, continue. Yeah. I've changed my opinion on this entire lesson. <laughs> if he had not been brought to the hospital within an hour, he would have died. Well, The next to go down was Josh Lo- I love that someone in the front was just like, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> she just heard about dust ripping a stomach open. <laughs> Probably because well, none of us knew that could even happen. <laughs> I was like, thank God, I care more about smog now than ever before. My tummy. <laughs> What's the cedar bucket doing? Still trying to track that sea story. <laughs> it's become animated by this point. Uh, I hope I'm so. a cedar bucket. <laughs> it actually Hi. won the silver in gymnastics. Because <laughs> nobody noticed it was a bucket. <laughs> Look at it on the beam. My it God, it's a natural. There. It's just right up there. The oh. balance. Balance. Perfection. Perfection. Simple perfection. Uh, next to go down was John Lorden, also overcome by dust. He started vomiting and decided he hadn't had enough of this bullshit race. <laughs> How was, far did he get? 20, not 30 far. feet? He, he didn't even get 10 miles. <laughs> yeah, I thought they getting... I love b- people getting less than 100 yards. Like, what the fuck are we doing? Yeah. Well, and then you if, get you're, on dress if you're, shoes. you're starting to be like, maybe can we make it nine miles? I mean, how can we just do that? Nobody will notice, right? <laughs> That's gonna just dusty Let me shit. jump in the truck with you. All right, great. We'll put the what, ribbon. Okay, great. You're going to enjoy this story. <laughs> it was just around this time that one of the South African runners, Len Tao, was chased off the course by a pack of wild dogs. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> So how is this a road? What road is this? 
There's traffic. The weird thing is, if you go back 100 years, somehow they would run this better than yeah. going 100 years later. A wild pack of dogs. I love that all these spectators were just like, well, there goes that one. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Good man, God. you know the deal when you get involved in a marathon. It's a fucking get him! A new sport just broke out. Oh, yeah. Wild dog runaway chase. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, some of them are gonna eat those dogs! <laughs> Don't run to Filipino village! No oh, dogs, come back! Heal! Heal! You'll ruin the event! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Even when there was pro- pro- like, you could have solved that problem. Just move the Filipino town near the wild dogs. All right, guys, it's obviously who can get there the fastest. It's uh, 24 miles. There's also a pack of wild dogs that can kill you. Here we go. <laughs> 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 also, uh, any houses you pass, they are legally allowed to shoot you as you run. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> he ran a full mile off course before the dogs finally gave up. Oh, that's gonna, that, that mile's going <laughs> to yeah, cost him. That's going to, you know what? That mile's going to cost That's gold right him, there. Right, he should have right won. Gold, yeah. <laughs> Come on, it's run really, through a dog attack. It's really, any marathon, I'll tell you, that's hard to overcome. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Meanwhile, the Cuban ran along in his street shoes and dress shirt. He kept stopping and chatting with spectators in broken English. <laughs> <laughs> Loving it. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't even notice the dog thing. Nope. <laughs> At one point, he was running and stopped next to a car because he saw the passengers were eating peaches. He asked if he could have one, and they said no, so he did what anyone would do and just grabbed them and ran off. <laughs> wait, wait. Sure. He's stealing sure. peaches? Yeah. This is this guy knows how to do a marathon. If you're gonna run a dusty marathon, this is how you do yeah, it. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Wear a beret and hawk peaches. Now, one of the reasons he grabbed the peaches was he had not eaten for two days before starting the race. <laughs> well, he did lose all his money. Yeah. He, but he had a belly full of dust now. <laughs> he barely got there to even run in the ridiculous race. <laughs> Remember, he gambled all his money away. Yeah. But the peaches were just his first run-in with fruit. Later on, he came across an apple orchard and enjoyed himself some apples. I can only assume he ate them off the ground because they turned out to be rotten. Uh, This led to horrible stomach cramps, which caused him to lay down, and then he fell asleep. (laughs) (laughs) Also, still in first place. I also like picturing that the truck of peaches had, like, thousands of peaches. Like, they could have easily given no. him a hundred. Like, no! No so, peaches for you, fancy runner. So th- this guy is the... <laughs> he misses dogs. He doesn't get dust gut. Yeah. But he puts himself on IR by eating rotten apples. Yeah, I'm pro- yeah. Pretty and then not even really, it doesn't really damage him. He just gets tired and yeah, well, His tummy hurts and he takes a sleeping. Should we wake him up and tell him he won the gold? <laughs> so Let him cute. sleep. Let him sleep. The leader at this point was Sam Allure, but then he started having terrible cramps as well. This may have been because they weren't allowed to really drink anything. They can only get water at two stops, one at six miles and another at 12 miles. Jesus this Christ. This was because Sounds James Sullivan thought that this marathon would be a good time to study the effects of purposeful dehydration. Wait. He's here. I have some ideas for tomorrow's race. James, we need to give them water for the last goddamn time. You would have been able to had I not tipped over all the buckets earlier this afternoon. Even the cedar oh, one? and I seem to have misplaced my wild pack of dogs. <laughs> God, no! James! 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 Stop laughing, James! It's not laughing, it's how I breathe. <laughs> oh, God, that's awful news. I've never laughed. I've never found anything funny. No, 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 no! <laughs> Oh, my God. (laughs) I love that no one has told him to kind of stay away from the games at all. James, maybe stay at home. Well, they also had like a six-month audition where it was like, well, he's terrible. Well, I can't (laughs) wait to see what he does with the real Olympics. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, it's in his hands. So, well, let's, you know, I mean, let's, let's let him see it through. I think he's got a lot of experience under his belt. So he minimizes the amount of fluid people can take in. The runners were not allowed to get water themselves at the two designated points. Of course not. Only someone who had nothing to do with the race could give it to them. Right. So even their coaches and doctors couldn't. Sure. So Sam Malor started walking and then pretty quickly just stopped altogether and sat down. He was done. Imagine one of the runners just like <laughs> taking a shortcut into town. Hi, would anyone be willing to come with me back to the main road and pour water into a cup and then handing it to me? Everyone's like, <laughs> get out of here, you psycho. How about these peaches? Are Please. They up for... I'm, I'm so dehydrated. I'm competing in the Olympics. I'm about to win a gold medal. If someone could just give me a cup of What's water. What's a gold medal? Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't even know anymore. I'll be honest. Loris was also getting cramps. This was around mile nine. He was currently Jesus. in fourth place. He <laughs> gave up also and asked for a ride from a car passing by. He hopped on board, and he waved at people along the route and at his fellow's runners as he rode past. Meanwhile, Hicks was in the lead. That's a fuck you wave, yeah. though, right? That's not no, a, like, it's great to hey. meet you guys. It's like, it is. So Hicks is in the lead. He was actually one of the favorites to win the race, but at the 10-mile mark, he needed help, too. He had a couple of guys there to give him support. He was begging them for water, but they wouldn't give him any because they couldn't. <laughs> what? what a horrible rule. I don't know. It seems pretty cool. You're right. Uh, but what they could do under the rules was sponge the inside of his mouth with warm, distilled water. You know, the rules are maybe getting a little too specific. Oh, are you thirsty? <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, uh, Fuck you. Oh, Fuck God. You. Oh, to have actual water. Oh. Uh, so I'm going to dip James? this. I'm going to dip this in my Shh, water. Listen, James is around here. And squeeze it. <laughs> and put it in your uh, little mouth. Uh, <laughs> all of the runners will be equipped with a sponge. James. <laughs> James, James, James. <laughs> They're allowed to dip it James, in distilled water just that's up, warm. Why don't we just set up areas where they can have water? Many no, vinegar. They're what, allowed James? to have vinegar. No, James. Yes. No. <laughs> Stop laugh breathing. I'm not laughing. Well, what is it? I'm breathing. I but a breathing lot of times issue. you don't do it. <laughs> oh, fuck this. <laughs> At the 17-mile mark, Hicks's crew gave him a cocktail... Of strychnine and white eggs. Or egg whites, sorry. Egg whites. That, huh. That's not the part we take issue egg with. whites. Who wouldn't want egg whites when they were dehydrated with a mouthful of dust in 90 degree weather? weather just, and a little tiny bit of poison. What? what, what why? Is, why? Strychnine is a rat poison, but it also stimulates the nervous system. And so it was used as a stimulant at the yeah. time in very small doses. Hearts on fire. Something or other. Uh, remember Rocky? <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit of So when I got nine. to the second word of that song, I realized I made a horrible calculation. <laughs> <laughs> At this time, there were no uh, rules about drug use in the Olympics, so it was No, okay. why would there be? <laughs> now, of course, it's probably promoted. Yeah. Lore's car uh, that he was riding in broke down at the 20 mile, 21 mile mark, and his cramps had stopped, so he just got out of the car and started running again. Uh, fine, this, Couldn't be happier with that decision. This guy, <laughs> this Only is the smart guy. You root guy. For. <laughs> he quickly ran past Hicks, who was leading. Loser! One of Lore's support crew told him to get off the course, but he passed on that advice and kept running. <laughs> he was the first one into the stadium, and he crossed the finish line in Woo! just a hair under three hours. The crowd went wild. Woo! They started chanting an American one. Yeah! The daughter of President Teddy Roosevelt was there, and she was about to put a wreath on his head. Give when, me that wreath! When a, an angry uh, Olympic officials realized what was going on. Loris had never said he'd won the race and had been acting like it was a joke the whole time. Now the crowd started booing. Loris... Mm. Uh, Lors copped to it and said it was all a joke. He wasn't actually going to accept the I'm gold medal. I'm a comedian. Medal. Come on. And, and people weren't actually amused, and the officials disqualified him. Now, back in the actual race, Hicks was still in the lead. When Lors had passed him, his crew told him to keep going because Lors was definitely going to be disqualified. Hicks was ashen and limping from the poison he took. So they don't even know the right amount of poison to give him? Well, you can't. At this point, when he's... I think any poison is not good. <laughs> well, that's uh, what I'm poison saying. Is good. Some poison's good. A little bit, actually. There is well, some. but when you're dehydrated, it's probably not great. 
No, I listen. I've been anti strychnine the whole story. You don't need to tell me. Yeah, uh, but you didn't hear mixed with egg whites. Come on, that's yeah. fun. It is fun. It's like a little, <laughs> with a little spinach. Some What's feta. in this? Egg whites and strychnine. Anyway. All right, give it to me. Yeah, I want to run. Word had reached him that Lors uh, had won, so he was slowly just chugging along, sad. But then someone told him that Lors had been disqualified, and he started moving again, pushing his legs to run. His support group gave him more egg whites and strychnine. Poison and more! This man needs more poison! And this time, brandy. Oh, good. Ooh. Get him drunk. Get him proteined up, drunk, and poisoned. They soaked him in water, and that appeared to do the trick. He looked alert again, and his pace quickened. They soaked him in water? Yeah, they just dumped water over him. Well, that sounds illegal. It's good to know that <laughs> drugs have always been a part of the Olympic yeah. Games. <laughs> Uh, a race official later wrote, over the last two miles of the road, Hicks was running mechanically like a well-oiled piece of machinery. His <laughs> eyes were dull, lusterless. The ashen color of his face and skin had deepened. His arms appeared as weights well tied down. He could scarcely lift his legs while his knees were stiff. <laughs> then he started hallucinating. <laughs> I just I mean... keep forgetting it's the Olympics. <laughs> What do you even He's hallucinate halluc- at that yeah. point? What, you, no, you hallucinate bad. a regular marathon. You're like, <laughs> oh, imagine a regular course. Water's everywhere. I just had an idea of rubber soles on my feet would make it so much easier. <laughs> just... <laughs> well, he thought he had another 20 miles to run. <laughs> so he started begging his support crew for food, and then he wanted to lay down. But they wouldn't let him, knowing if he stopped it was over. They offered him tea, but he passed on it. They gave him more brandy. Uh, yeah, they were, your way out. There were two small hills before the stadium. He walked up and then jogged down the other side. By the time he got into the stadium, he could no longer run. He was barely shuffling along. His support crew picked him up, and they held him like, uh, like, like he was a, like a bench. Like they made a bench with their hands at the finish line, so his feet were dangling, so it looked like he was running. <laughs> Sorry, they're just so desperate for someone to actually win that that's okay. What I like is that he made it all the way to the stadium, and only then were they willing to do something that could possibly disqualify him. All these people will be dicks about it. Here, make a bench with your hands. Let's swing him into the finish line. Put your taint on my palm. There we go. Connect palms. (laughs) Anyway, so it looked like he was running, so he was declared the winner. Three hours, 28 minutes, and 53 seconds. This is the longest... Official finishing time in Olympic marathon history to well, this to day. Well, to be fair, he was tripping his balls off. <laughs> <laughs> he lost eight pounds during the marathon. During the marathon. More egg whites were needed, huh? He never ran another marathon. Why? Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Had he taken one more dose of strychnine, he would have died. Might have been the best thing for him. Of the 32 racers who entered, 18 did not finish. The Cuban, Felix Carbajal... Even with the coffee stand. Even with his nap <laughs> and, and street shoes finished fourth. What? <laughs> Almost the meddled. The guy who took a nap finished fourth. <laughs> Almost meddled. Yeah. The guy what? who was chased a mile by dogs. Oh, come on. Finished ninth, and his fellow countrymen finished twelfth. Wow. I love that he didn't even... Get, I love that the dogs didn't even no, throw him off. No. He's like, oh, I'm going to still it's do it. It's kind of just like a moral thing. I really just want to <laughs> do it for me. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sullivan was pissed at Lors uh, and gave him a lifetime ban by the Amateur Athletic Union. A few months later, after everyone had calmed down, Lors got the ban rescinded on the grounds that he was temporarily insane. <laughs> and a known prankster. <laughs> Well, you see, what we're dealing with here is a man who has a history (laughs) of pranking people, which tells me there's a precedent. It's not his first prank, which makes me think there's a history of pranking and that this prank, while outlandish, is very funny in pranker terminology. (laughs) He just pulled a hell of a prank. He doesn't like to play by the rules. He's a prankster. This guy, he's a very funny guy. The next year he won the Boston Marathon. (laughs) <laughs> With a car, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, how about a happy ending? Remember George Iser, the gymnast with one leg? Of course I yeah, do. Right. I've been rooting for him the whole time. He performed in the You've been second... You've in his story a lot. He performed in the second gymnastics competition on October 29th. 
In one day, he won six medals, three of which were gold. Wow. One of those was for the horse vault, which at the time did not use a springboard. So just <laughs> clumpity, 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 clumpity. And then he's up. He won that? With- yep. No one attempted to compete in the Olympics with one artificial leg again until 2008. The World's Fair slash Louisiana Purchase Celebration slash, slash Olympics, Olympics slash uh, dog we hate fight. women slash <laughs> anyone who's mud different war, slash mud slash racist horse, historical slash horse miracle <laughs> slash racism museum <laughs> slash bull fight. <laughs> It officially came to a close on Defem- December 1st, 1904. Uh, can you imagine the relief event. when it was dumb? Oh. It's like you just got out of war. Oh, thank God. I think St. Uh. Louis is still recovering from this event. <laughs> They're still like, God, it's still, we still have we the think, smell on us a little bit. We think about it. I yeah. mean, obviously. 1904 was bad for us. It was not a good time. So the fair was considered a huge success. 19, 19 million people came to the fair. But to be fair, that's over seven months. Still, that's Still, a lot of people. Yeah, all right. That many people didn't even exist back then. Now, <laughs> Rory, if I may. I don't know numbers. Rory, <laughs> uh, are you sure about that? <laughs> I don't know any history. <laughs> this is the only history I'll ever retain. Yeah. Two Welcome years to after. My world. Two years uh, after the Olympics in uh, 1906, uh, two years after the Olympics in 1906, the IOC reviewed the Germans' protest of the fancy diving event. I love how they won't let it go. There's also, yeah, like, why was it even taken seriously to begin the, with, ever? The result... Who was fanciest? We must solve this. The result was overturned. There's no video. And third place was declared a tie. But for, how could what, they overturn though, it? There's no way the Germans weren't fancier. When you put it like that, I mean, if, what, if you what think do they of do? Germans, what's the first word that comes to your mind? Fancy, Fancy diving. diving. Fancy you. diving, always. You're right, well, now that I think that about it. That is their legacy. <laughs> that and that alone. I can't believe... To this day, <laughs> the United States has not acknowledged the decision. And we're no. still pricks about our fake fixed that's, Olympics. That's no. like, right before the credits, that's the like thing that comes up to this day. <laughs> the United States who won't. Everyone's like, what a dramatic story about these divers that I didn't care about at all. <laughs> to this day, the United States still won't acknowledge their success. <laughs> Directed by. <laughs> <laughs> the next Olympics were held in London in 1908, and they followed the 1904 pattern of Americans being assholes. In the opening ceremony, the U.S. flag bearer refused to dip the flag for King Edward VII. And, of course, there was a marathon. Strychnine was used again. Mm. A runner from Italy entered the final lap of the marathon in the stadium, but was such a mess, he collapsed twice and then started running the wrong way. Well, is it a cu- do you have to go the same way the whole time? I think that's a fair question for marathoners, for, for novice marathoners. It's weird what is a rule and what isn't a rule. Yeah. Judges? 24.8 total, I feel like, wins it. Even if that's just in a circle at the beginning. Yeah. Yes. Ju- judges, Pedometer techno- Go ahead. Judges turned him around and pointed him in the right direction, and because of that, he was disqualified. So an American won. <laughs> Sullivan continued to be a very influential person in early Olympic uh, movement, even though IOC president Pierre Coubertin mm. hated uh, Sullivan. <laughs> he never really got in with the old boys of the IOC. He didn't have their respect, but he could push his agenda because of his power in the U.S. During the 1908 uh, Games, Sullivan got himself the position of secretary of the U.S. Olympic Committee. He felt it would be great back home to be seen helping Americans as much as possible, so he lodged endless protests at all the events averaging a few per day. (laughs) While the sensational press loved it, actual journalists thought he was a total asshole. For the 1912 Olympic, Summer Olympics, female divers and swimmers were finally allowed to compete. America had a very good female swimmer named Ida Schnall, but Sullivan, sticking to his being a piece of garbage, didn't allow the American women to participate. Sullivan finally died on September 16th, 1914, at Mount Sinai Hospital, (laughs) And After an operation on his intestines, and which now, is now an Olympic event. <laughs> and now his great-great-grandson is running for president. <laughs> <laughs> Bernie, right? Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders. Bernard. 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 <laughs> um, Everybody feel good about America? Yeah. 
Uh, well, that's a normal story. <laughs> <laughs> it's way, people were way dumber than you even thought. Like, you were like, yeah, no way. It really does, like, they're, they're, that is, it's a good story to hear because it makes you sort of r- look at our time right now and be like, it's not that bad. Yeah, we've come, we've, we've come a long way. We hear bird, I mean, we don't have wild dogs. Oh, really, Ferguson, boo-hoo, right? Is that what you mean? No, 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 no. no. Well, no. we've made it this far. I'm no. not going to comment on that. <laughs> Feels like I'm in the stadium and I'm about to run backwards. So I'll just... Put your taint in my hand, Rory. I'll get you there. Carry me. <laughs> Carry my taint. So Even then, point... as they were doing it, he was like, guys, seriously, I can run. I'm fine. Shh. Let us hold your taint as Move you run. Move your legs. Move your legs. Come on, Hicks. Run. Pretend like you're running like a road runner. I feel weird. You keep doing it. The strychnine is kicking in. I mean, that is just, that is absolutely, Jesus. that's insanity. Dave has a hat. What's up, girl? That, um, is, that is the wackiest. It's legitimately wacky. Like, welcome. it's a wacky Are Olympics. you willing to go on record with that? <laughs> yes. Wow. That's it's right. a wacky well, Olympics. That's big. Someone has learned what the dollop is. What's up? Are you guys having a hat off? Yeah. Where's your hat, dude? uh, Are you competing in hats? Well, I already already won. I already won. All my hats have been given to me, and I pride myself on that. I've never purchased one hat. That should be an event. Ladies and and gentlemen, uh, we have to get going. We've probably gone way over, and... uh, and other comics have to come up here and do shows and get sick from the mic that I've been talking into. Well, Is it fine. weird that I still think curling shouldn't be? A lo- <laughs> <laughs> that's, your, that's your takeaway? <laughs> curling, I still got a bug up my ass What are they doing? Curling. Sweeping the ice? Oh my God, look at these Filipinos trying to curl. Dogs, look out, dogs! You guys, thank you very much! Thank you! Thank you! Thank you.